Hello, good morning students. Today in this series of lectures, we are going to take up the next story. The open window. The open window is composed by H. H. Munro, best known by his pen name Saki. Hector Hugh Munro was a Scotsman. He wrote under the pen name of Saki. Munro became a newspaper correspondent and journalist. As a short story writer, Munro is remembered by the entire world. During World War I, he enlisted in the army and was killed in action. Munro is best known for his up unsetting and cleverly constructed short stories, often with trick endings. Munro was also Munro also wrote two novels, The Unbearable Bessington and When William Came. The present story, The Open Window by Munro or Saki. is a well con well constructed short story with a tricky ending it appears to be a ghost story but actually it is not it is in fact a satire on the popular beliefs in ghosts and spirits the central characters are vera a 15 year old girl and the caller mr frampton discovering that the visitor was a total stranger Vera planned to frighten him away. She gave him to understand that they were expecting the shooting party to return home although they had been missing for 3 years. Even their bodies were not found. They were drowned in a bog. Mr. Frampton is horrified to see the party coming. He saw sure they are ghosts. He fled in panic. Mr. Frampton falls into Vera's trap. The reader is frightened to think of its effect on Mr. Frampton, who had come here for curing his nervous illness or nervous breakdown. Mr. Nuttall and Vera. Frampton Nuttall is a single man in a new town Frampton Nuttall actually is a single man in a new town his sister has arranged for him to meet several of her of her acquaintances to prevent him from becoming lonely there in the town on one such visit vera the 15 year old girl or niece of frampton's latest host mrs sepleton invites him to sit and wait with her while her aunt readies as he waits frampton anxiously thinks about an appropriate way to compliment the young girl while reserving the highest flattery for her aunt however before he can he can decide what to say vera breaks the silence and asks frampton whether he knows many people in town he admits to being a newcomer who knows hardly a soul and explains with a note of exhaustion that he is in the process of visiting all the contacts his sister made in the town 4 years ago when she worked at the rectory when vera asks how well he knows her aunt he confesses that he doesn't know much about her besides her address and name after answering Frampton wonders to himself whether Mrs. Sepleton is married, and he notes 
signs of masculine habitation in the room. After determining that her aunt is a virtual stranger to Frampton, Vera decides to inform him of her aunt's great tragedy, which she states occurred three years ago, shortly after Frampton's sister left the town. Frampton cannot imagine tragedy striking such a calm country town, but nevertheless listens intently to Vera's story. Vera points to a large open French-style window in the room and remarks how odd it is to keep it open on such a warm October afternoon. Curious, Frampton asks whether the window relates at all to the tragedy. It does, Vera explains. How three years ago, her aunt's husband and two young brothers excited through that window to go snipe shooting. That summer was especially raining and all three of the men drowned in a bog while on their hunt while on their hunt. Tragically, nobody recovered the bodies since that day. Her aunt has kept the window open during the evening. Ever hopeful that her husband and brothers will one day return hunting dog in tow and walk back in through the window. Vera recounts the memories her aunt shared of the hunting trio. Mr. Sepleton's white raincoat slung over his arm. The sound of her younger brother Ronnie teasingly singing to her Bertie, why do you bound? Vera finishes the tragic tale by confessing that on occasion she gets an eerie feeling, odd feeling that the men will actually appear at the window. Just as Vera finishes her story, Mrs. Shepel Mrs. Sepleton enters. She immediately apologizes for the window for the open window and explains that she is left it open she has left it open for her husband and brothers who should soon return from shooting She expects they will they will dirty her floors with their muddy shoes Paying very little attention to her guest, Mrs. Sepleton continues to talk about shooting, lamenting how few snipe there are this season and expressing hope that winter will bring a healthy supply of ducks. Frampton Nettle listens, aghast at the grimness of the situation. He attempts to shift the conversation away from the hunting expedition, but Mrs. Sepleton cannot be redirected, frequently looking expectantly out the window as she prattles on about hunting. In a final, final desperate attempt to shift the conversation, Frampton explains the trouble he has been having with his nerves. Mrs. Sepleton cannot contain her yawn as Frampton details the differing med medical op opinions regarding the proper diet for a man in need of a nerve cure. Suddenly, Mrs. Sepleton jumps to attention and excitedly remarks that the hunting party has finally returned. Unbelievingly, Frampton looks to Vera, expecting to share with her a look of pity at the depth of Mrs. Sepleton's delusions. But Vera does not return his gaze. Instead, she looks out, horrified, onto the lawn. Frampton quickly turns towards the window and notices the silhouettes of three men, each armed, walking towards the house. 
one of them has a white coat draped over his arm following just behind is the shell out of a small hunting snap spaniel the man enter the house and one of them sings out bertie why do you bound at that moment Frampton grabs his belongings and bolts out of the house, narrowly escaping a collision with a passing cyclist on the street. One of the men, presumably Mr. Sepulton, asks Mrs. Sepulton about Frampton's quick exit. She explains that the fleeing man is named Mr. Nuttall and wonders why he looked as though he had seen a ghost. Just then Vera interjects that it must have been the dog that frightened Frampton. She then tells a short extravagant story detailing Frampton's supposed deep phobia of dogs stemming from an awful incident in which a pack of dogs chased him through a South Asian cemetery and forced him to hide away all night in a freshly dug grave. Dear students, the present story has a has a tripartite structure. The first part, beginning with the conversation between Vera and Frampton, the second with the entrance of the aunt, and the third with the return of the hunting party. Saki employs flashback to divide these three parts, interrupting the present. with a story within a story inspired by vera's imagined past like many of saki's stories the the open window features a surprise ending when the reader discovers that vera whose name signifies veracity or truth is ironically anything but truthful means that is a total a total bundle of falsehood just as vera tricks frampton so saki tricks readers by leading them to believe that vera is a credible storyteller he does this in part by making vera a young girl in saki's time it was rare for a woman to be portrayed as cunning or conniving rather women and girls were frequently cast as the more trustworthy characters whereas men and boys were the rascals by casting the troublemaker as female in his story saki counters stereotypes about the proper way for young women to behave though this story does cast a girl as troublemaker vera's brand of troublemaking is distinct from that of saki's male characters in other stories she relies on her imagination to execute pranks whereas saki's boy characters usually rely on destruction or aggression saki's characterization of vera also provides some clues to the careful reader about vera's true nature chief among them is his characterization of vera as a storyteller whose speci- speciality is romance at short notice critics have often understood vera to be a representation of saki himself and a personification of narrative authority vera is also an important character in the the open window because she introduces childhood a theme common in many of saki's stories saki frequently portrays childhood as an unfortunate state of ch- children being trapped in a boring adult world this perspective stems in part from h h munro's own upbringing like many of saki's children vera is under the watch of the aunt an imposing figure from whom she desires escape and achieves it through imaginative storytelling and trickery the window The window is a representation of this desire to escape. 
It's a symbolic window to a different world through which Vera can travel into an alternate reality entirely of her own making. In this way, Vera's tall tales are a means of escapism from life in the boring adult world. Saki's stories frequently satirize and subvert the order of the Edwardian upper middle class world of which Munro was a part. In the open window, he does this by troubling and transforming the rural and calm setting of the formal house visit, whereas the story imbues the otherwise mannered and bourgeois scene with a grim tale of death and delusion. The tale becomes darker still when the aunt enters because Saki continues to describe the setting as a cheerful one even amidst, amidst the aunt's clear and tragic misunderstanding. Using words like bustled, whirl and cheerfully, Saki subverts the traditional setting of the Edwardian sitting room with the grotesque. This transformation is necessary to liven up the boring and mundane life in Edwardian society. That's a very interesting story. That's all for today and have a nice day.